Now let's take a look at another composing methods pattern called replace temp with query. The motivation behind this pattern is that you're using a temporary variable to store the result of an expression, and you could put that expression into its own function and just reference that instead of the temporary variable. So in this example, we have a couple of temporary variables. We have base price, which is set once and then used twice, and then discount factor, which is set in a conditional and then used once. So let's start with base price. We can use extract method on this right here. We'll call it get base price. And now we can reference that function instead of the variable itself. And since base price is no longer used, we can just get rid of it. Now, naturally, this is a very simple expression. If the expression incurred some performance hit, maybe it's fetching from a database or something like that, then this refactoring might not make sense. But for very simple expressions like this, it could make the code a lot more readable at the expense of one or two clock cycles to re-execute that. So now let's take a look at discount factor. It's set to an initial value, but we don't really care about that initial value because immediately afterwards it's going to be set to something else. So we really just want to extract this conditional. Call it get discount factor. And now we've seen this before where we are assigning to a parameter, and it's a parameter that gets an initial default value that we don't really need. So let's do what we did before, just to clear a result. And then we'll set that result and return it. Now we no longer use this parameter, so we can remove the parameter. The compiler will tell us to remove this one. And now we see that we can inline this declaration for the temporary variable because this initial value was never used. So we inline that, get rid of that, and now once again we have a temporary variable that is immediately used right afterward, so we replace that with the query. And of course we can continue to clean this up a little bit. For example, we have this result that always returns one of these two values. We don't really need a temporary variable here at all. There's another pattern for this we'll get to another time, but for now we'll just assume it. Return that, or return that. Now the compiler will tell us that this return statement is never reached, so we can get rid of it. And then it'll tell us that this value is never used, so we can get rid of that. So that cleans that up a little bit. And essentially, we've replaced these temps with queries now. Now, there's an additional pattern, or at least I'll call it a pattern, that's not in the book, and that's because the book was written 14 years ago, and 14 years ago we didn't have properties. We had private members with getters and setters. And indeed, in C-sharp, that's what properties compile down to, is getter and setter functions. Well, what we can do here is take a look at these functions, this get base price and get discount factor, they don't have any side effects. They're observing a value, but they're never modifying a value. So in order to make this line a little bit more readable, I think we can replace these with properties. So first we're going to use a pattern called rename method. Let's turn get base price into base price. Now let's turn it into a property. Get rid of parentheses, throw a get in there, and then the compiler will tell us to get rid of these parentheses as well. And now let's do the same thing for discount factor. Now in many ways this is sort of personal preference. I, I like to think of a property as observing something and a function as doing something. And we're not really doing anything here, just observing. So let's get rid of these parentheses, throw our get in here, and then the compiler will tell us to get rid of those parentheses. 
And that sort of made this line a little bit more readable. We got rid of those unnecessary parentheses and those, those words get. If you think about reading the line out loud, what we're essentially doing is saying get base price times get discount factor. Well, in the business domain, it's really base price times discount factor. The get is a language construct we threw in there to indicate that we're getting a value. And the parentheses were a compiler construct that we had to throw in there to indicate that we're calling a function. Neither of those things were really necessary for the business meaning. And so we could refactor those out. And so now this line is about as clean as it can potentially get. Now just to show a variation of this, let's back out our changes. What would happen if we did these in another order? Let's say we tried to do discount factor first. What would happen then? Well, this is where we see the benefit of this refactoring because discount factor is using this base price. So if we refactor that, we already see that it's requiring that base price. In fact, even if we continue with that pattern we had before, actually we'll just skip straight ahead to this return. We can get rid of this get rid of this. And if we wanted to, at this time, turn this into a property, we couldn't do it because it requires this argument. And that's because this argument is coming from this temporary variable here, which should be a class level query. Almost forgot, let's make that instance just to be consistent. And so that's really the purpose of this refactoring is that we're querying the current state of the class, or the current state of the object, rather. So instead of passing around these temporary variables <clears throat> with their localized scope, the state of the object is all around us, and so we should be able to query it. And so if we do this in the wrong order, we might even run into a problem here. Let's say we wanted to refactor this one now. Well, first of all, let's finish this. Our discount factor, get rid of that. Now we can replace this here and get rid of discount factor entirely. And so now, what if we wanted to replace this value? Let's refactor that to get base price. And now this sort of gets in our way, doesn't it? We want to use this here. Then we also have to use it here. It's, that'll indicate to us that we can probably use it in here as well. It's more of a roundabout way of getting to the same location. and then we could replace these with properties. It got us where we wanted to go, but in a much more roundabout way. There's also a risk that we could end up duplicating that logic. Let's say, let's try that again. What if we go with discount factor first? instance, return, return, now we don't need this, and so what if right now our next thought isn't to go back here and refactor base price, but our next thought is that we really want this to be a property, not a method, and so we need to get rid of this. So now we know, well, we can calculate the base price. Let's put that calculation right here before we even consider refactoring this base price. And now we can get rid of that to turn this into a property. 
but even while we're turning this into a property, we've duplicated some logic here. Now on this small example, it's obvious that we did that. On a much larger example, on a class that could have hundreds of lines of code, it might not be so obvious. Or if we're in a hurry, we just need to get it to work in order to check in at the end of the day and go on with our lives, we might forget that we did that. And so now we have this duplicated logic. Now we can continue this direction we took. Rename that. Now we're going to turn it into a property. Maybe I should name this pattern. Replace method with property or something like that. Next step was to inline that declaration. And then, of course, it becomes obvious that we can replace the temp with the query. And so we've moved in the same direction, but this base price one was getting in the way of our other refactorings. We should have done that one first. Because now, what if we're done with this refactoring, we're done work for the day, we go home, maybe it's a three-day weekend, we come back on Tuesday after a holiday, we have forgotten that we've duplicated this logic. And now we look at this base price and say, well, we can replace this temp with a query. And we can even rename the method and turn it into a property. Well, on that Tuesday following the holiday weekend, we were only looking at this code. No, this code looks great. We've refactored it. It's a lot more readable. makes more sense. But we forgot, or maybe, maybe we didn't forget, maybe someone didn't tell us that we've duplicated this logic here. Now, in this small example, it's very easy to fix that. But it's something to watch out for in larger examples. And so the point being that with these refactoring patterns, you want to make sure you're doing them in the right order and watch for those, those changes where if you're duplicating a piece of logic or if you're passing in values as parameters that you really shouldn't need, then maybe you're applying the refactoring a little too soon, a little too hastily, and you should reanalyze what you're doing and make sure you're applying these refactorings in the correct order. And that is it for the replace temp with query pattern. Thanks for watching.